And what a luxury for the Vikings and what a headache for the opposing defense when you can rotate Gage Freeze and Daquan Johnson into the quarterback position. It's going to be Gage again in the shotgun. Has Joel Shabby in the backfield. He wants to throw. Got a man open. It's Derek Williams. He's got a first down at the 20, 15, 10. Breaks a tackle. Five. Touchdown. Carson's Vikings get on the board first. They go up 6 nothing with 6-12 to play in our opening quarter. I'll tell you what, Williams got on the outside. Two amazing stiff arms out there. What a great, great throw out there on the sidelines. Like I said, two big stiff arms. Got in the touchdown. Like to see the Vikings score on that first drive. I was a little bit surprised how much space he had out there when he caught the ball. I don't know if the defense was caught off guard or not, but he had, like you said, it took a couple of stiff arms to get into the end zone, but he had a little bit of running room to get uh, some momentum. And uh, Drake, one of the fastest guys on the field. Now the Vikings look like a very odd formation. They're going to set up for two. Daquan Johnson's going to try to run it in himself. And he's in. The Parsons Vikings convert on the two-point conversion. 6-12 to go in our opening quarter. Parsons 8, Columbus 0. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to Viking football on V93. Look at the old singing gate there and just went ahead and uh, <laughs> snapped it there. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. Hard line. Gabe Martin, the running back. I'll tell you what, the Titans are throwing a lot of different angles at the Vikings here. They're running to both sides of the ball. So second down and five for Columbus. They put a man in motion. And they give it to that wide receiver. And he's going to have the first down out across the 30, out close to the 35. Caden Crane was a wide receiver. Cassidy put him in motion, and so just like on their first possession, Columbus showing that they can move the ball against this Viking defense. A, uh, a good defensive play by the Vikings and a penalty stopped Columbus on their first drive. Another running play up the middle, and this time it's going to go for a short gain, probably about one yard on the carry for Columbus. A little better push by the Viking front right there. They're almost like Columbus is letting them go by and they're going in between. you got to kind of hold your position if they're going to sit there and use that kind of blocking technique on you there. 5.07 to go in the first quarter. Clock on the move. Parsons leading Columbus 8-0. to zero. Call it second down and 8. Columbus needs to get to the 45. Little play action pass. Cassidy looking to throw. It's tipped up. And falls incomplete. Great defensive play by Patch Lodeholtz. I'll tell you what, he did a great job there. Came quarterback came around on the right there had a running back just peel off right behind Pat he made a great play right there got up in the air knocked it down good play so third down and eight for 
Columbus, they definitely, I think, want to do most of their damage on the ground. And now again, a little bit of confusion for the Columbus offense. Still plenty of time on the play clock. It's at 15 seconds. Cassidy set up in the pistol. One receiver to the near side. Again, puts Kane in motion. And looking to throw. Try to set up a screen, and it falls incomplete. Right, that looked a little funky. I don't even know exactly what happened there. They were trying to, I think, hit a guy that came out of the backfield. But uh, no damage done. It falls incomplete, and the Vikings are going to force the Titans into a punting situation. And the always dangerous Daquan Johnson and Derek Williams will be back to return the kick. Yep, Columbus looked kind of out of sorts there. I mean, they kept looking over the sidelines, and they called the play. Didn't look very good. Left-footed kicker gets off a good kick, but it's going to be fielded by Derek Williams. He's coming to the near side at the 35. Gets to the edge, 40, 45, and knocked out of bounds at around the 45-yard line of Columbus. Okay. And that was just pure speed by Derek. He got the corner there. Johnson gave him a big block out there on the sidelines, too. Peeled around there. Didn't look like he had much room. Tiptoed, got past the 50-yard line. What a return. So great field position for the Vikings. They will be at the Titan 45. First and 10, Nolan Prail trotting out onto the field for the Vikings. Curious to see who uh, will be under center. Looks like Coach Freeze. Well, he was talking to three of the big playmakers for the Vikings there, Johnson, Freeze, and Lodholtz. That's and pretty tough to defend when you got, but like you said, both of them quarterbacks back there. You never know which one's going to come out. Looks like it's going to be Daquan Johnson in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Gives it to Gage Freeze over the left side. And Gage has a pickup of about four yards down to the 41-yard line of Columbus. Good job block blocking by the Viking front there. They're getting some holes. They're getting a nice good chunk, chunk plays there, four or five yards on the first carry. That's not too bad. Titan defense trying to encourage one another. They gave up a 70-yard drive the first time Parsons had the ball. Much shorter field this time for the Vikings as they start in Columbus territory at the 45. Right now it is second and six for the Vikings at the Titan 41. Daquan has it. Handoff to Shibe looking for a hole, and he's got a decent gain. Going to be short of the first down, but it's going to be third and short for the Vikings. They're going to mark Shibe down at about the 32-yard line. Bring up third and two. You're talking about seeing how that offensive line was going to start out the game with losing a big player in uh, Oldemont. And I'll tell you what, the way this Viking front is looking right now, I mean, they're getting some Titan defenders on, the, on their heels and getting some good runs there. So we'll see if the Vikings, we'll call it third and a long two for the Vikings. Daquan Johnson takes the snap, gives it to Shibe again. I think he has the first down around the edge. It's going to be very close. I think he has it. It looked like he got around the edge just far enough. Titans did a good job of stretching that play out as far as they could. But Shibe put that foot down and got that first down. You know, and how hard it is a first down and how hard is it for the defense? Because you know at some point on that read option it's going to be Daquan Johnson keeping the ball. I know they've got to have somebody keying on him. But uh, and that is it's, it's that's, amazingly, that's hard for amazingly the tough to do that. He's such a good athlete and handing off to good athletes as well. Another snap to Johnson. This time he keeps it himself. Coming to the near side, he's at the 30. He's got a blocker out in front of him. He's at the 20, 15, 10, five touchdown, and we had a flag thrown. And I think they're going to get Devonte Yates for holding. I'll tell you what, that looked like a pretty and clean block from my boy, deja, standpoint. Yeah, deja vu from the fourth quarter last week. But this is going to come back. And again, I don't think uh, I don't if I don't know if it was holding or not, but I it looked like a clean block. I'll tell you what, wow. he got it on the edge and he had it looked like he was in good. But it that's a rough call, especially that with, with what happened last week. You got to shake it off. Those players are going to be there. So again, uh, we are doing a live video stream, so you can make your own call if you're watching it on the video stream at klkcradio.com. That penalty 
Backs it up to the 31. Still first down for the Vikings. Daquan rolling to the right. Wants to throw. He's got a man open, but he overshoots Patch Lodeholtz by just a couple of inches. Bring up second down and six for the Vikings. And that's too bad. He just put a little too much air underneath that. He had Lodeholtz right there for every bit of a big first down. Might have even got the edge of cut. Could have got in there for six. So the last two touchdown runs for Daquan Johnson have been wiped off the board by penalties. The one last week that probably would have won the game for the Vikings and now a holding call here in the first quarter against Columbus. Daquan heads to the bench. It's going to be Gage Freeze looking to throw. Gets it out to Anthony Posher. Close to the first down. Will they give him some forward, enough forward progress? That was a good play. Going to mark him. At, I guess he stepped out of bounds about a yard, yard and a half shy. Tell you what, that was a good play right there. He threw that ball on a rope out there to him. Good catch. I thought he looked a little closer than that, but like I said, maybe he, maybe he stepped out of bounds where I didn't see that. But ball is – oh, we've got a flag thrown, I believe. We've got a flag thrown, and Vikings hadn't even come out of their huddle yet. Was it, is it some sort of sideline warning? You see that a lot at high, in high school anymore, and that's what it is. It's some sort of sideline warning. Well, it's not even a warning. I think. Yeah, still, still no penalty yet. Well, it, I can't believe how strict they are anymore on that. I see that called almost every week. I'll tell you what, that's that's twice I've seen that, and I mean, this early in the game to get that, it's kind of kind of weird. Here we go, running play. Patch load holds up the middle, and he has a first down and a little bit more. He's down to the 20-yard line before being stood up by about half of the Columbus defense. Kind of a little different look there for the Vikes with Lodeholtz coming out of the backfield there. Looked like a pretty good runner to me from up here. He put his, got his pads lower, got the first down, good run. Real quick, we'll give you one more update on the girls tennis team. Grayson Freeze will be playing in the singles final tomorrow, I believe, and she or she may be playing right now. And she's going to state, Ali Hicks going to state, and Xavier Womack Johnson and Kelsey Smith are going to state in doubles. So great job by the lady in tennis. Pass play to the near side is going to be caught again by Derek Williams. Very close to the 10-yard line. Short of the first down, I believe. It's very close. Good play by Freeze out there. Rolled out. Went through that across his body. Threw it again. Threw a good strike right there. Got a cut. Good, good catch there. And it is just enough for a first down. Showing a little so bit more pass on this drive here, and, and Freeze is doing a good job putting the ball where it needs to be. First and goal for the Vikings from the 10-yard line. Ball on the left hash. It is a running play. Up the middle. Big hole for Shiby, and he is tackled just shy of the goal line. Nice job by the offensive line. He took the handoff there. I thought he had Pater looking all over. It got tripped up right there at the three. Good run by the Vikings. So second down and goal for the Vikes. Ball spotted just inside the three-yard line. Anthony Posier will go wide right for the Vikings. Nolan Prale coming to the near side now, along with Derek Williams. Gage Freeze takes the snap, gives it to Lodeholtz. He's looking for the end zone. No signal yet. He is in for the touchdown. Three-yard touchdown run by Patch Lodeholtz and the Parsons Vikings go on top, 14-0 over Columbus. What a push by the Viking offensive line right there. There's some big kids on that Titan defensive line. And I'll tell you what, Lodeholtz went through that gap right there and just was not going to be denied. What a run. Been several years since Parsons has knocked off Columbus in football, but they're up 14 nothing right now. Again, that odd formation as they line up for the two-point conversion, looking to pass, and it is going to be broken up in the end zone. Nice job by Columbus. Vikings fail to convert on the two-point conversion, but with 36, 36 seconds to go in the first quarter, it is Parsons 14, Columbus 0. We'll be back after this 30-second break. This is Viking football on V93.
B93.5. We have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mile 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B. Get you through your workday with the afternoon hit mix. Spend your evening with the Zach Sang Show straight out of Hollywood. And last but not least, it's a throwback party every weekend on V93.5. Been a good first quarter for the Parsons Vikings on both sides of the ball. They're up 14-0 over Columbus. 36 seconds to go in quarter number one. Pivotal game <clears throat> for both teams. Both teams one and one in district play. And, well, you don't – you know, there's a big difference between two and one and one and two. Oh, especially how tough this district is here. Every win counts. And especially with this year play starting earlier this year, it's a huge game. Loadholz has the ball teed up at the 40-yard line. Gets the kick away. Low line drive kick. Fielded at about the six-yard line by Columbus. Vikings had pretty good coverage, but then a great run back, though, as he splits about three Vikings. And that ball is returned all the way across the 40-yard line. There were about three Vikings down there surrounding that kickoff return man. And I don't know how he slipped through everybody, but it ends up being an excellent return of about 40 yards. I'll tell you what, there was good coverage. He kind of got out on the end, had a missed couple missed tackles there. I almost looked like I saw a block in the back there too that might have sprung it but obviously we have a little better view from up here. They might only call that on the Vikings. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so first and ten for the Titans from their own 44 yard line. They'll send Clay Saparito wide to the near side. There's the snap. Running play, kicks it to the outside. Nice recovery by the Viking defense. They're going to be about a three or four yard gain. It was a good play out there in space. He, again, broken tackle there. Vikings need to wrap up a little bit more. They could be holding these guys to, instead of a five yard gain, might be a one or two yard loss. Ball is spotted at the Columbus 47 yard line and that's going to be the final play of the first quarter. It's Parsons 14, Columbus 0. We'll take a one minute break and be right back. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. V93.5, we have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mile 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B. gets you through your workday with the afternoon hit mix. Spend your evening with the Zach Sang Show straight out of Hollywood. And last but not least, it's a throwback party every weekend on V93.5. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. Back live at Marvel Park, homecoming 2018 for Parsons High School, and it's been a good homecoming night so far for the Parsons Vikings. They lead up 14 to zero over Columbus. We're getting ready for the start of quarter number two. Uh, they never did get the chains reset on the far side of the field. Teams reversing direction they're going, and uh, let's see, I think they're about to get it set up. We had problems with that last week, I believe. And now we're about ready for football. It's going to be... But it... I think he only gained about three or four yards on first down. And they're showing this as a second down and three. It should be about second down and six or seven. So we'll see if they can get the chain gang that all lined out. And I think, I think they've got it right now. That looks pretty close there. I'll tell you what, what a tremendous start for the Vikings. Um, after that l tough loss last week. Yeah, they've come out strong. Running play to start the second quarter goes for about a one-yard gain. 
Running play over the right side to Sean Robinson. He's a senior, 5'8", 155 pounds. Ball spotted at the Columbus 49-yard line. It'll be third and about four. Vikings defensive line got a good push right there. Won the battle in the trenches on that one. Had the linebacker come in and fill. Short, short game there. Good job, Viking D. Let's go. Lynn Schallenberger split to the near side for Columbus. Patrick Cassidy in the shotgun. Puts a man in motion. Little jet sweep. They've had success with that, but they're going to be a sh little bit short of the first down. They get into Viking territory. We'll see what Columbus wants to do. It's going to bring up fourth and short. About fourth and two for Columbus from the Viking 49. I tell you, if they don't make it, they're going to give Parsons tremendous field position. Good play out there by Heisey sitting on the edge of that defensive end spot. Held his in, kept him from going outside. Good play. Titans keep their offense on the field. Vikings need to make sure they don't jump off sides. Little run blitz, and I think the Vikings are going to stop him. And it may have been a fumble on the play as well. I'll tell you what, that was a great call by the defense coordinator for Parsons right there. Brought a blitz on that short fourth down there. Good hold by the Parsons Viking defense. Good, good tackle right there by the whole team. Vikings are going to take over at midfield. To this defense, I've talked about it a lot all year and with good reason. I mean, it, for, for a defense that was just getting gashed over and over again uh, for the last several years, for the most part, and now they're just... They're, they're very hard to move the ball on and extremely hard to score against. They've only given up one touchdown the entire year. Well disciplined and hit that weight room hard in the summer. It pays off. So the Vikes have it at the 50-yard line. A little bit of confusion this time. Joel Schaub, you're going to have to run off the field. Seven seconds on the play clock. Gage Freeze, empty backfield. He wants to throw. He's going deep over the middle. He's got Jocelyn. He brings it in at the 30, and he's going to outrun everybody into the end zone. 50 yards, just one play is all it takes, and the Parsons Vikings lead it 20 to 0. Give Gage Freeze just a little bit of time. He didn't have much time against Frontenac last week, but the offensive line did their job, and he completes it over the middle to Daquan Johnson for the 50 yard touchdown play, and the Vikings enjoy a big lead now with 10.41 to go in the first half. Tremendous poise in the pocket right there by Freeze. He had a guy right in his face, threw an absolute beauty to Johnson right there get him in space and then he's gone Vikings again with that swinging gate formation for this two point try it's like ball be snapped to Daquan Johnson Daquan coming to the near side looking to throw again fires to the end zone and it's caught by Derek Williams in the back of the end zone 10.41 to go it's Parsons 22 Columbus 0 We'll take away, step away for a 30-second break and be right back. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. Welcome back to Marvel Park, everybody. Scott Marvel, Ryan Chandler with you on B93. Again, you can pick up a live video stream of tonight's action at klkcradio.com. Vikings on top, 22 to zero. Catch Lodeholtz preparing to kick off to the Titans. Columbus had a 40-yard kickoff return last time. We'll see if the coverage team can do better this time around for the Vikings ball fielded at the 12 up to the 25 and getting stood up right there nice job by Parsons good job on the coverage team right there you gotta stay in your lanes when you're on the kickoff team you stay in your lanes convulge to the middle don't let them get to the outside to where they have more space out there in this one on one that's a good job by the Viking coverage team so the Columbus offense who has shown the ability to move the ball against the Vikings a couple of times. They started off with a screen play back in the first quarter, a little screen pass that went for a lot of yardage. And they've, they've been able to run the ball at times, haven't been able to do much damage through the air. Go with three, four receivers set, excuse me. 
One man in motion, running play over the right side. Big hit, big hit by the linebackers filling in right there. Defensive tackle held him up at the line. Linebackers came in. Boom. I'm glad you were able to see the action, Ryan, because I'm looking right at this post, and I couldn't see. I knew the Vikings came over the big stop, but I had no idea who made the hit. So second down and nine for Columbus. Ball spotted at the Columbus 26-yard line. Cassidy looking to throw this time. Trying to set up a screen. Oh, and it's oh, intercepted oh. by Daquan Johnson. And he got knocked to the ground. If he hadn't got tripped up, he was going to take it for an easy pick six. Looked like he was playing center field out there. That ball got thrown up in the air. Trying to get the screen out there that they've worked on. He sat back, read it, made a great play, jumped up there, got the ball. What a play for the Viking D. So excellent field position for the Vikings. They have it first and 10 from the Columbus 24. And this is looking more like the uh, Parsons team we saw in the first four weeks. They're definitely playing with a lot of tempo. Gage Freeze in the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself, coming to the near side, looking for the edge, slips, and still has a decent gain to about the 20. When, when he went to cut back to the inside, his foot went out from under him, or he may have had eight or nine yards on that carry. And that is unfortunate. He had blockers downfield. If he could keep his feet underneath him, granted he was being chased by a couple Titans there, but good play from Freeze right there on the look like the design keeper. Homecoming 2018 for Parsons High School, and they're leading at 22-0 over Columbus, 9.28 to play in the first half. Parsons has it second down and five from the Columbus 20-yard line, and we've got a timeout called by head coach Kurt Freeze. So we'll step away for just a 30-second break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. Welcome back to Marvel Park, everybody. Scott Marlowe, Ryan Chandler with you on V93. 22-0, Vikings leading it. 9.23 to go in the first half. Parsons has it second and five from the Columbus 20-yard line. I was just told you can also pick up the live video feed uh, on the Parsons High School Facebook page and also KLKC Facebook page. So if you're having any trouble, klkcradio.com. Try everybody's friend Facebook and see what happens. 9.23 to go in the first half. Parsons ready for the second down play. Another quarterback keeper by Gage. He has the first down at the 15. And then he gets inside the 10 before being wrestled out of bounds by about three Titans. Got some great blocking by the wide receivers by, right there. That was impressive for them to go out there and hold their blocks out there to let the quarterback freeze, kind of read where well, he wants to go. I don't think they're giving Gage a very good spot. I, I didn't see him step out at the 10-yard line. I thought he got down to about the 7 or 8, but it's going to be first and goal from the 10-yard line for the Vikings, looking to put even more separation between themselves and the visitors from Columbus. Going to be Daquan Johnson in at quarterback. As we had heard rumored, Daquan has gotten a lot more reps at quarterback, and he's made some exciting plays. He's going to keep it himself. Now he's looking to throw. Now he's going to have to outrun the defense. Now he goes to the end zone. Is it caught? I'll tell you what that is. He did a great job of pulling that down on the sideline there. I believe it was in. I still didn't ever see a call from the official. It was either incomplete for being out of bounds, or he caught it. Close to the end zone. I think they're going to bring it back to the 10-yard line. Nope. I take that back. Well, I'm still waiting to see. Okay, they are going to bring it back to the 10. It was a great throw, a great catch, but he couldn't get his foot down over by the far sideline. Yeah, you got to. That's the thing with Johnson's quarterback. He gets out there. He's got a strong enough form to where he just swung that thing in there. Looked like he almost had it. The had it on the sidelines there, but good play call. There's going to be Gage Freeze now at quarterback. Looks like he has Joel Scheibe on his right shoulder. 
And throw it out into the flat to Nolan Prail. He's got a good block. And he's going to be short of the goal line. Going to be shoved out around the six-yard line, it looks like. That'll bring up third and goal. I know it's too early to think about possessions and whatnot. I tend to get ahead of myself. But the Vikings could actually try a field goal if they wanted to, and it'd be a four-possession game instead of a three-possession game if Coach Freeze wanted to go that way because that'd make it a 25-point lead. But I have a feeling that Coach will not attempt a field goal if the Vikings don't convert here. But he's already thrown out a couple of wrinkles at us here in the first half. Here we go, third and goal for the Vikings from the Columbus 6. Daquan Johnson back at quarterback. Takes the snap. Looking to throw to the end zone. Goes over the middle and he led Devonta Yates, I believe, a little too much. And now it'll be fourth and goal. Yeah, a little too much on that pass right there. He had him open running across the middle there. Just got to take a little bit off of that. Just how the outstretched hands of Yates there. So this is a big play for the Columbus defense. They have not kept Parsons out of the end zone here in the first half. Give them a little confidence and maybe a little momentum and get see if they can get their offense jump started. It's like Daquan Johnson running in with the play. Only nine seconds, so on the play clock. I don't know if the Vikings will get this off. And timeout called by Coach Freeze with two seconds. Play was slow getting in from the sideline, so Coach Freeze has to burn his second timeout. That's really the first time that you've seen the Vikings kind of look kind of out of sorts there coming there. Maybe Daquan didn't like what he's seen right there out of the huddle. Get back over here, get get everything collected up, get a good play right here on fourth down, try to get in the end zone. So 22 to nothing is your score. We'll keep it here at Marvel Park. 8.54 to go in the first half. In case you're joining us late, it is homecoming 2018. The uh, royalty for 2018, Jensen Riley and Nina Taylor, were the 2018 princesses. And Chandler Chavez is your 2018 homecoming queen for Parsons High School. And I, I kind of rushed through my what was going to be my final tennis update while well, we've got a little bit of time. Let our listeners know, Grayson Freeze and Allie Hicks both qualified for state in singles. Kelsey Smith and Xavier Womack-Johnson will be playing in the doubles final tomorrow at regionals, and they also have qualified for state. So four girls from the tennis team headed to the state tennis tournament. Here we go, fourth and goal. The Vikings go with four receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Here we go. Pass to the end zone. They lob it up for Yates. And I think he oh, got he it. He got his feet down right there. Oh! Did they say he was out of the end zone? Wow, he looked looked good from here, but it's about as far away as it could possibly be. I'll tell you what, you got to throw it to your playmakers right there. It looked like he got both of his feet down, but from our vantage point, that is a long way over there. So it is going to be turned over on downs, and Columbus will have it first and ten from their own six. That's 22 to nothing, Vikings on top. That hurts the, a lot right there. You had a lot of momentum going on that drive. You just had the big interception by Johnson there. Couldn't really tell if he got his foot down or not, but see that defense got to step up again right here. Got them pinned back in their own red zone here to see if they can get a stop. Yeah, still a lot of time left in this game. 8.50 to play in the second quarter. Three running backs for Columbus. They put one in motion out to the right side. Only one second on the play clock. That'll be a quarterback keeper that goes for no gain. Again, I thought Columbus looked just a little bit out of sorts. Yeah, they did. Look, I mean, it was a late motion by the Titans out there. Worked out well for the Vikings there because there was nowhere for him to run on the outside there. Patrick Cassidy goes for no gain. So second down and 10 for Columbus from their own six. They'll send Lynn Schallenberger split out to the near side. Running play. Nice hole this time. And very close to a first down out near the 15-yard line. Good tackle by Williams right there. He, he got him, seen it went real low on him and upended him, kept him from getting the first down there. Sean Robinson was the ball carrier for Columbus. Going to be third and about four for the Titans. Less than eight minutes to go in quarter number two. Vikings leading at 22 to zero. Parsons trying to get back on the winning track after that seven to six loss last week. Running play goes for the first down and more out across the 25 yard line. This is looking like the Columbus we saw on their first drive of the game. So first and 10 out to the 26 yard line. 
Yeah, the Vikings looked like their defense was, was on the ball, but they weren't all the way ready there. Columbus took advantage of it, got on the edge, and big play for Columbus right there. First and 10 for the Titans from their own 26. Cassidy takes the snap, wants to throw. Now he's going to pull it down and run. He's out to the 25 and gets knocked out of bounds after a very short gain. He shorted the 30, maybe a gain of one yard. Good job by the Viking defense there. Defensive line held up, held up their end right there on the line of scrimmage. Good play out in space there by the Viking D to hold them, like you said, to a minimal gain. Give Cassidy two yards on that run. So second down and eight for the Titans. Down to 7.33 to go in the first half. Parsons leading it 22 to zero. Cassidy in the shotgun. Wants to throw. Goes over the middle. And it should have been caught. That would have been a big game too. Right off the fingertips of Caden Crane. I'm not really sure why he dropped that. I don't know. He may have taken his eyes off the ball as receivers tend to do because he had some green out in front of him. I'll tell you what. He got just right behind the linebackers and right in front of the safeties there. Like I said, the ball was thrown well. Good break for the Vikings there just to see that he couldn't, you know, didn't come up to catch. So now third and long for Columbus. Cassidy in the pistol this time. Wants to throw. Boy, that looked like a hold. No call. He's going to have to run it himself, and he's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Nice job by the Columbus quarterback. Yeah, I'll tell you what, right there on the edge there, I mean, it, Vikings had a good initial push right there, and I mean, it looked like he may have held on to a Viking defender there on the edge there, uh, springing for that first down. I tell you, that was a really big hold by the Columbus defense when the Vikings had it first and goal, because I think if Parsons had scored there, that would it could have been a backbreaker, even though we're still in the in the first half. Now Columbus has some momentum, a little bit of rhythm on the offensive end, running play right up the middle, goes for about five yards out across the 40, up near the 44, called a gain of five. It looks like the Titan defense or Titan offensive line. They're pushing. They're letting them go to one side, inside the outside, whichever way those interior linemen go. I mean, they're running right off the backs of them right there. So you got to hold them right up front. Here we go. Second down and five. Cassidy puts a man in motion. Keeps it himself on the read option. Nice play by the quarterback. Gets another first down. Like I said, he's not very big, but he carried a couple of tacklers anyway. Gets into Viking territory, where Columbus will have it first and ten. Yeah, you had a couple of missed tackles out there in the backfield. It really looked like the Vikings had him stopped back there. He slipped a couple of tacklers there, went off around the edge. Good play out there in space to take down that quarterback. He looked like he had a pretty good head of steam going. Cassidy got up a little slow. He's a little shaken, but I think he's going to be okay. He's definitely going to stay in the game. So first and ten for Columbus. They're into Viking territory. Going to throw the ball out into the flat. Yeah, that's going to be a big gain. Down to about the 35 and close to another first down. This quick pass out into the flat to Schallenberger, Tommy Schallenberger. That's yeah. a pretty big running back back there. you got to wrap him up. Let your buddies come over there and help you out a little bit when you have that big kind of running back like that. Again, yeah, he's, he's huge. 6'4", 225. Yeah, he, uh, and now Vikings are going to use their final timeout, this time on the defensive side of the ball. 6'22 to play in the first half. It's Parsons 22. Columbus Zero will step away for a 30 second break. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. Fleming's Insurance is a good time. Is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. V93.5, we have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mile 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B. gets you through your workday with the afternoon hit mix. Spend your evening with the Zach Sang Show straight out of Hollywood. And last but not least, it's a throwback party every weekend on V93.5.
Good job by the secondary right there to get up, read that bubble screen out there. Cassidy keeps it himself on the read option. He's close to the first down. Going to be a yard short, I believe, and undoubtedly Columbus will go for it on fourth and short. Yeah, like Viking, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, it looks like that offensive line for the Titans, they're shielding one way, and quarterback's almost doing another read option on the offensive line. Whoa. Boy, quick snap, and Columbus has the first down. They didn't waste any time play, trying to draw the Vikings off sides or anything. That time they went with a quick count, and they have a first down at the Viking 24-yard line. Vikings got to do a better job of wrapping up there because it looked like they had them right there close to the line of uh, the game there, and just slipped out of it. Got to wrap up. Remember, this drive started all the way back at the Columbus 6, and now they're inside the Viking 25-yard line. You go with the jet sweep coming to the near side, and really nowhere to go. That's nicely covered by the Viking defense. You know, when a play like that, that starts with that defensive end right there on the right, forcing them out, not letting them come back in. And everybody else just feels down, feels downhill. Good play by the Viking D. Uh, they gave him a pretty good spot. I thought he maybe got a yard. They're going to give him at least three yards on that play up to the 21-yard line. So we will call it about second down and seven for the Titans. Cassidy in the shotgun. He's going to throw, looking, looking, pump fakes. Now he's going to go to the end zone. Johnson back there. And it is incomplete. That was a well-thrown ball. Daquan Johnson on the coverage intended receiver was Caden Crane. That was a well-executed play by Columbus. The receiver just could not quite haul it in. Vikings maybe caught a little bit of a break on that one. Yeah, Vikings looked like they were a little surprised with them going deep like that. Johnson was gaining a lot of ground on him, but just overthrew him by just a little bit. So third and seven from about the Viking 21-yard line. Cassidy in the shotgun. Wants to throw again, and the pass is incomplete right through the hands of the intended receiver, Grayson Walden. There's a flag out here on the, on the short side here. I'm not sure what we got going on with that. We have a hold on Columbus, and let's see what the Vikings want to do. Columbus, or excuse me, the Vikings are going to decline it. That'll bring up fourth down. So it'll be fourth and seven instead of third and 17. When you keep that bend, don't break defense right here. Fourth down, they've been driving the field. Love to see the Vikings D get off the field right here and let that offense get on the field and run the ball. Yeah, a whole new set of players running onto the field for Columbus. I can't imagine that they're going to punt, and I can't imagine that they're going to try a field goal, but... They are going to attempt a 37-yard field goal. And the snap is good. The kick is on the way, and it is going to be no good. And the Viking defense holds. I'll tell you what, Johnson was just one ounce away from having that thing blocked right there. Great job by the Viking defense to hold them right there. Columbus was driving. Ben, don't break. Get off the field. Get some water. Let this offense come and uh, burn some clock down right here. Try to get on the board. So Parsons takes over on their own 21-yard line. I think this is the worst starting field position they've had tonight. Vikings have really had good field position. They're going to send Devonta Yates split out to the left side. Posier and Prale on the near side. Daquan Johnson will be the quarterback. Has Gage Freeze with him in the backfield. And he gives it to Gage. Not much room for Freeze, though, and he's going to have a minimal gain of maybe one yard. There are some big kids on that defensive front for the Columbus Titans there. They kind of bottled them up in the backfield, not letting them get any space out there. I think Coach Freeze has to be pretty pleased, though. The Vikings have shown the ability to run the ball at times tonight, and that's something, really, honestly, they haven't even attempted it much this year. They've had so much success throwing the ball. Daquan Johnson still in at quarterback. He wants to throw. Quickly gets it to Anthony Posier, and he's out to the 30-yard line, close to a first down before being knocked out of bounds. Good pitch and catch right there. Johnson threw a good ball. Posier made a great catch right there. Took a big, pretty big hit out there on the sideline, too. Good, good job to hold on to the ball. Third and one for the Vikings. Ball spotted at the 30. 
Clock on the move, 350. 356 to play in quarter number two. Now Daquan Johnson heading to the sidelines. He will not be out on the field for this third and short. It'll be Gage Freeze in at quarterback. He'll have a couple of big guys back there, Joel Scheibe and Patch Lodholtz in the backfield with him. Let's see if the Vikings can convert on the third and one. They give it to Lodeholtz, and he's got a blocker out in front of him. It is a big hole. He's at the 40, 45, and across the 50 before being drugged down. The Vikings come up big on third and one, and they keep this drive alive with three and a half to go in the first half. Looked like it was a good good job by the Viking front right there. Looks like there's a little bit of yellow on the, on the short side here. Let's see what this call is. Yep, we have a penalty flag around the Viking 35-yard line, and the Vikings are walking backwards. So another big run going to be wiped off the board by a penalty. Yeah, it's so frustrating. You get big gains like that again, and just just something on the sidelines right there. You got to make sure if that guy's already by you, let him go. You got to make sure you get your head on the right side there. Coach Freeze talked about that in his pregame interview. Boy, did they call a personal foul? There's a personal foul on both teams. Penalty's offset, and the play will stand. Well, like I said, I couldn't really see what's going on, but you have the offsetting penalties right there, so that does give Vikings that big gain right there, but you got to be curious to see what you have going on. I don't know if they're a little jawing going on, but you got to stay disciplined and just play football out there. So first and 10 for the Vikings at the Columbus 45-yard line. 3.31 to go in the first half. Parsons leading at 22-0. to zero. be nice if the Vikings could chew up about another three minutes of the clock and get into the end zone and go into the locker room with a four-touchdown lead. That last play, the Viking front did a great job of giving Lodeholtz a hold the run through. He made a couple big cuts. Got a good block on the outside for a good run. Gage Freeze in the shotgun. He's going to throw. Gets it to Posier again. Gets around one man and gets down close to the 35. Very close to a first down. He's probably about half a yard short. Clock will stop. 3.22 to play in our second quarter. Good job by the Vikes there with that. The freeze through a good pass out there. Posier made a good catch again. Made a little bit of move. Got himself close to the first down. Good play call right there on first down. Viking offense has moved the ball well every time they've had the ball. Columbus came up with a big stop. And the Vikings had it down around the five-yard line. Weren't able to get it into the end zone. Other than that, Parsons has pretty much been able to do what they want on the offensive side of the ball. Empty backfield for Gage Freeze. Puts Daquan in motion and gives it to Daquan. Daquan looking for the edge. He's at the 35. Gets knocked out of bounds at the 30. Took a pretty big hit. But he has the first down. Good job by by Johnson getting on the edge right there. You can tell he knew where that first down was, went to it, got in front of it. Good run, make sure to get that first down for the Vikings. First and 10 from the Columbus 31 yard line, 317 to play in quarter number two. Vikings looking to extend their lead. They're up 22 to zero. It's gonna be Derek Williams split to the near side. Nolan Prail, also one of the receivers for the Vikings. Pump fake, and they're going deep for Derek, and he's got the ball, and he is just short of the goal line. They're going to mark him out around the three-yard line. Again, I question some of these spots, but he must have stepped out, but that was a great throw and great concentration by Derek Williams. Amazing catch on the near sideline. Looks like that was the old hitch and go, go route out there. Freeze had enough time in the pocket right there. Pump fake. Williams just kept going on down on his route. Good, good play call right there. Great catch, great throw. So last time the Vikings were in this spot, they weren't able to finish out the drive. So we'll see what they can come up with. First and goal from the three. Daquan Johnson will be the quarterback. He'll have Joel Scheibe and Gage Freeze in the backfield with him. Four receivers for the Vikings. There's the snap. They give it to... Patch, I believe, and he's going to be stopped after possibly no gain. I'll tell you what, the Vikings line are still doing a great job of getting the Battle of the Trenches one up front with that with that play the last two ones. Let's see if the Vikings O-line can keep that mentality of we're going to win this battle up front. Maybe about half a yard on the gain for Patch. Ball spotted just inside the three-yard line for the Vikings. They have it second and goal, 2.40 to go 
in the first half. Parsons on top, 22 to zero. Daquan is your quarterback. Johnson takes the snap, gives it to Gage Freeze, looking for a hole, and there's nothing there. Maybe a loss on the play. Nice job by the Titan defense. Yeah, it really looked like there was a little bit of mix-up right there between Freeze and Johnson, and didn't get that mess point completely there. Got blown up in the backfield. So third and goal from the four. And we'll see what Coach Freeze wants to do. Wouldn't be surprised at all if the Vikings put it put it in the air on this one. I'll tell you what, you one or no one with as much space you have on the far side of the field out there might run that little screen play to Johnson out there. Or even Yates looks like he's lined up out there. Get somebody in space, make one, one guy miss, get in the end zone. Gage will be the quarterback, and, but I don't think the Vikings have a timeout. They don't have any timeouts, and they're going to have to take a penalty. It's going to be a delayed game because Parsons didn't have the right personnel on the field, and now it's going to be third and goal from the nine-yard line. So that's that's really been the main Achilles heel of, for the Vikings tonight has been once they've gotten down inside the ten-yard line here on these last two drives, they've just kind of been their own worst enemy. Yeah, I mean, like I said, look like there's confusion. You might have that from time or two when you got two quarterbacks running in and out. You're not sure who's going to get to play this one right here. Like I said, have been doing a good job, but that one hurts right there. You got moved back, and you don't want to get farther away from that goal line. Heads up play by Daquan trying to call the timeout, but he didn't realize that Parsons had already burned all their timeouts here in the first half, so they have to take the penalty. Third and goal from the nine-yard line. Gage Freeze has three receivers to the right. It's Daquan Johnson split all the way out to the near side. He wants to throw. He's going to go to the end zone, and it was intercepted, but the Columbus Titan defender was out of bounds. So it'll bring up fourth and goal for the Vikings from the nine-yard line. Good job by the Columbus defense right there. They had, I mean, everybody covered, and he threw kind of a 50-50 ball right there, and luckily he, was, he caught it out, out of bounds with his momentum. So this will been pretty impressed with this Columbus defense the last couple of drives that the Vikings have had because they've kind of taken a page out of the Vikings book, you know, that bend but don't break mentality that you've talked about tonight. Here we go, fourth and goal. Vikings with three receivers to the near side. There's the snap to Gage. He's rolling to the far side, looking, looking, and the pass is too low, and it's going to be incomplete. And once again, the Columbus defense holds, and they will get it. First and goal on their own nine-yard line. Just a minute 35 to play in the first half. Score remains. Parsons 22, Columbus 0. Yeah, that's that's a tough break for the Vikings right there. They had a great drive going down the field. Again, you got some penalties that are, that are starting to be the Achilles heel of the Vikings in this game. So Columbus has hurt the Viking defense on the ground, but they're probably going to have to do a little something through the air if they're going to get on the board here in the first half. Just 95 seconds to play, and they're going to have to drive 91 yards. Cassidy takes the snap. Running play goes for maybe a yard. Good job by the Viking front right there. Linebackers fill the gaps right there. They were not going to let him get a big gain right there. Good job tackling by the Vikings right there on defense. So second down and nine for Columbus from their own 10-yard line. You have to wonder how aggressive Columbus will even be. They had a couple of big stops by their defense to keep this game within reach. And only a minute left, and they have 90 yards to go. We'll see how aggressive they want to play this. They're going to keep it on the ground, and it's going to be possibly a loss on the play. I can tell you, if the Vikings had any timeouts left, they'd be using one right now on defense because they'd have a chance to get the ball back in good field position, but... Clock's just going to keep rolling. It's third and ten from the nine-yard line. And I think Columbus will probably just keep it on the ground and get as close as they can to running out this first half clock. The Vikings are, are meeting them at the line of scrimmage and doing a better job late in this second half of wrapping up these big Titan running backs. Cassidy puts a man in motion, takes the snap. Gives it to the man in motion, and he has a nice pickup out across the 15. Vikings tried to strip him, but couldn't do it. And that will almost certainly be the final play of our first half. Again, the Vikings will get the ball to start half number two. And it looks like Columbus heading for the locker room, so they aren't going to worry about taking another snap. Your halftime score, Parsons 22 and Columbus 0. We will send it back to the station for a few minutes, let them play some music for you, then Ryan and I will come back and break down the first half. Again, Parsons 22, Columbus 0, and you're listening to Viking Football on V93. 
V93.5. We have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mayo 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B, get you through your... V93.5, we have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mayo 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B, get you through your workday with the afternoon hit mix. Spend your evening with the Zach Sang Show straight out of Hollywood. And last but not least, it's a throwback party every weekend on V93.5. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999.
And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Marvel Park, everybody. Scott Marlowe, Ryan Chandler with you on V93. 22 to nothing is your score. Parsons leading Columbus at the half, and Parsons will be receiving the opening kickoff here in just a few minutes. First things first, we'll run down the scoring plays from the first half. Vikings got on the board with about six minutes to go in the first quarter. It was a 30-yard pass from Gage Freeze to Derek Williams. And the Vikings converted the two-point conversion. Then very late in the first quarter, a three-yard run by Patch Lodholtz put the Vikings up 14-0. And then early in the second quarter, a one-play 50-yard drive for the Vikings. It was a 50-yard pass over the middle from Gage Freeze to Daquan Johnson. Gave the Vikings a 22-0 lead, and Ryan, the Vikings pretty much controlled the first half. Kudos to the Columbus defense, though. They came up with a couple of big stops late in the half to keep uh, Columbus within reach. Yeah, the got to give credit to the Vikings. You're, gonna, you're kind of worried about how they're going to come out after that game last week, but I'll tell you what, they came out running the football that we haven't seen them run before. They got some big chunk yard plays, got on the board early. Columbus was driving on them too, but this defense, man, don't break and keeping them off the board. They could have had probably a couple more touchdowns, like you said, down there late in the second quarter, but, you know, turnovers got, got to them and penalties hurt quite a bit too. As far as some other scores from around the area, I know that Lebec County is leading Wellington at halftime 21-7. to And what else do we have, Ryan? Well, the, it's actually Wellington's up 27-20 on, on Lebec right there. Galena, I didn't think it's got the half yet, but that was 54 to nothing. Goodness. And then uh, got a close one. Uh, Frontenac is up 14-7 on Caney. Yeah, that, that that surprises me just a little bit. I didn't know what to expect. I've, I don't think I've ever actually seen Caney play a football game <laughs> in my life, but I know that, that they've really built a solid program down there. And uh, I know that they, G Galena, well, you said, what, 54-0 to right now over Baxter. And they're obviously the be best team in the district, I think, hands down. And But Caney hung with them for about two and a half quarters, so, so they can play. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I believe it's Coach Davis down there uh, in Caney. I'll tell you what. He runs a good program down there. Those kids get ready to play every Friday night. And, you know, they gave Galena a pretty good game. And, obviously, they're giving Frontenac a, a good game after Frontenac's, you know, pretty big win over Parsons last week. Yeah, Frontenac certainly going into that game with a, a lot of momentum because they uh, – that game last week could have gone either way, and uh, unfortunately for the Vikings, it was front neck that came out on top, seven to six. And you know, at all the things we talked about in that loss, the one thing that we didn't really mention was uh, that Patch Lodholtz actually made the extra point initially, but it was called back due to what else—a penalty, uh, somebody running on the field late for the Vikings. And then after the five-yard penalty, Patch hooked it to the left, and that ended up being the difference in the ball game. Both teams heading back out onto the field. We're very close to getting started with our second half. Again, it's homecoming here at Parsons High School. In case you minced, uh, missed it, Jensen Riley and Nina Taylor were the princesses this year and Chandler Chavez, 2018 homecoming queen at Parsons High School. So congratulations to those ladies. Vikings ready to prepare, excuse me, Vikings ready to receive the second half kickoff, again, Parsons leading it 22-0 over Columbus. And they go with an onside kick, and the Vikings miss it, and it is knocked out of bounds, fortunately, by Columbus. The Titans had a great chance. That was a trick play. In fact, the kicker didn't even kick the ball off the tee. They brought in another guy off another angle to kick that. So a bit of trickery by Columbus trying to get something going. And, boy, I tell you, the Vikings, the ball... I don't even know that you can fault the Viking return team. You know, football is its not like a basketball. You never know where, how it's going to bounce. And it just somehow got by a couple of the Viking up men. And Vikings catch a break, and they're going to have decent field position. Ball will be spotted just shy of the Viking, or excuse me, yes, of the Viking 34-yard line. Yeah, that was a big break right there. Pretty good coming out of the half right there. You're down 22 to nothing. You got to put out all the stops when you're on the road. They pulled it out. Luckily for the for the Vikings, got kicked out of or knocked out of bounds. 
good field position. Let's get this offense rolling here. See if we can continue to run the ball. If not, the downfield throws have been there this whole game too. And just like the Vikings started the game, it's going to be Daquan Johnson, the quarterback, to start things off. Takes the snap. He's going to keep it. Now he's in trouble in the backfield. He's going to run and gets run out of bounds after no gain, maybe even a short loss. Yeah, it looked like it, he wanted to throw it out there to look like Posier out there, but he was covered up, had two defenders on him. Smart play, just running out of bounds there, just trying to minimal, minimalize the damage there. So it's actually going to go for a one-yard loss, ball back at the 33-yard line. So second down and 11 for the Vikings. We're just underway in the third quarter, 11.52 in quarter number three. Parsons leading Columbus 22-0. Now Gage Freeze in at quarterback, and we've got a penalty on Patch Lodholz. I'm not sure what what happened there. I mean, the ball had barely been set down by the official, and Patch was taken off toward the line of scrimmage, and rough start to the first half, or to the second half, excuse me, for this Viking offense. Yeah, definitely not an ideal start there. Looks like Patch, I don't know if he didn't look like we knew where the ball was actually lined up, uh, up yet or went across the line there. Not a good start. you got to make this ground up right here. But now the Vikings facing second down and 16. They're going to have to get all the way up to the 44-yard line for a first down. Ball spotted on their own 28. Devonta Yates will be split wide to the left. Johnson out there with Yates. This is kind of a different look for the Vikings. And they're going to throw out to Patch Lodholtz. And he cuts it back and gets knocked down around the 35-yard line. So the Vikings get past the original line of scrimmage. But it's still going to be third and long. It'll be third down. And about nine to go for the Vikings. Good play call there. He, instead of cutting it outside, he actually cut it inside. I'm not sure if he would have had a little more room on the outside there. But good to get it back in within under 10 yards to try to get a third down here. Yeah, his uh, two blockers were on the outside. You're right. But Patch apparently saw something because he, he didn't waste any time cutting it back to the inside. Picks up about seven yards for the Vikings. So third down and nine. Ball spotted on the Viking 35. Gage with an empty backfield is going to throw over the middle, and Daquan has it. What a first cut. Down and what a cutback by Daquan, and he, then he gets wrestled down around the 40-yard line, and it, Daquan may be hurt. I'll tell you what, he went up there. That was a good ball thrown by Gage right there. He's going to be okay. It's a good ball throw. Johnson up there made a good catch. Took a hard hit right there by a couple Titans, but good play on third long to get for the first down there. So first and ten for the Vikings now from the Columbus 40. You know, Daquan is such an athlete and so smart. He already knew that he was going to reverse direction while he was in the air. He had just barely caught the ball, and before he had even hit, hit the ground, he already knew he wanted to reverse direction, and that's what he did and picked up about five or six extra yards. Yeah, you don't teach that. That just that just comes, comes with playing in the game. That's just... That's just good good football right there. Gage puts Patch in motion, fakes a handoff to Patch and gives it instead to Joel Scheib. Oh, he gets tripped up. That would have been a really nice game. Nice job by the Columbus defense. It's still a decent pickup for Scheib. Up to the Columbus 36-yard line. Despite the kind of slow start with the penalty and then the confusion there on that just with the run off to the outside, they're going back to the run game as well after a big big long pass there. Give to Shibe for five yards. I like seeing the keeping the ground game established. Yeah, I agree. It's really nice to see after not having much of a running game through the first five weeks. See if the Vikings can finish off a drive. They stalled inside the 10, their last two drives. Well, it looked like there was some motion by the Vikings. No flag. Pass complete to Derek. Spin move. He's at the 20. And going to get thrown out of bounds. Oh, that could have been a late hit, and it is. Yeah, he, he was out yeah, of bounds. We've got, got, hit him and too. we've got an injured. Oh, that doesn't look well, good, that doesn't at, look good all. at all. That may be a broken. I think we've got a broken bone. And the poor kid, I think he's also the kid that got whistled for the late hit. Yeah, he's got a broken ankle. The, the crowd now is seeing it. Yeah, this, that, is, this is ugly. That does not look good over there. You hate to see injuries like that happen and especially right there on the sideline and that is a definitely gruesome gruesome injury yeah that we've got some sort of broken bone in the ankle or maybe a shin bone i'm certainly no doctor so i'm not going to speculate beyond that but uh they're going to bring out the the medics i'm sure there's always a ambulance at these high school football games i can tell you in a second it is caden soper 5'11 senior 
is the injured Titan. Boy, yeah, you just hate to see that. It's, you know, it, at first I was he was pointing to it right away uh, to the official, make sure the official knew that he needed help. But I, I was hoping it was a bad cramp. Yeah, that's what that, I was hoping that's for. That's what I was hoping for, maybe to cramp up. But, I mean, we're not going to really describe that injury right there because, I mean, you hate to see that. I mean, them kids go out and play so hard week in, week out. I mean, you don't see him probably coming back after an injury like that. That nothing, nothing but prayers for that kid there. Right. Yeah, they've already got the stretcher wheeled out. The, the injury occurred right on the Viking sideline around the 15-yard line. No idea what caused it. Um, well, yeah, you just hate to see that. I, I would say this is the first time, in, I think, in several years I've seen the, a stretcher have to come out. Um, but, boy, yeah, that is... All kinds of qualified personnel out there assisting the young man. And uh, meanwhile, of course, all the other teams. Helmets off, taking a knee. And, boy, that what a way to end your senior year. That's that's tough. Yeah, that, uh, that, that is. is I mean, you're out there, you know, you're busting your butt out there, and especially on a sideline injury right there. I couldn't really tell if he had a lot. The play was coming back at him, and I don't know if he kind of got rolled up in there out I said it was it was a gruesome injury there, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully that kid can you know maybe come back and. Yeah, I I don't think the crowd didn't notice it right away. I saw it almost immediately when it happened, and then about 15 seconds later, you may have heard a collective gasp from the crowd here at Marvel Park as people got a look at the injury. The poor kid being lifted onto the stretcher now, and he will be. Headed off, I'm sure, to uh, the hospital, and he'll be looking at surgery. I uh, just hope for a quick and complete recovery for this Columbus Titan football player. He, uh, well, I can say he ended his high school career by putting a heck of a hit on Derek Williams. He may have gotten flagged for it, but he he really put a shot on Derek right at the 15-yard uh, line. Yeah, there wasn't any giving up on the plays at all. I mean, they're, you know, they're down, they're down in this game, but you know, you're never out of a football game at all. So, I mean, he's fighting to try and make a play, and you know, unfortunately, I mean, this game is is violent, and like you said, you just hope for a speedy, speedy recovery for the kid. You know, it's got a uh, undoubtedly, it's obviously a painful injury, but the young man never really seemed to be hurting that much he pointed to the injury right away so the official to make sure the official knew but then he just stayed calm and just laid laid still on the ground and uh, he's he's heading off going to get a standing ovation from the crowd here at Marvel Park so he get, gets wheeled off to the ambulance Dequan Johnson over wishing him best best of luck Yeah, you gotta like the the sportsmanship by the by the Vikings in this crowd here on going in there, just making sure that, that kid knows. I mean, how hard he fought and everything like that. And like I said, you, I mean, can't say enough how bad how bad that's gotta gotta hurt for the kid there. And and you know, and for Columbus, this team's playing hard coming right. out like that. And I mean, that, that that that's that's definitely tough to deal with there. So I believe we're going to see a personal. Yep, yeah, they are calling the personal foul for the late hit on Columbus. So the. That will be marked off from the end of the play, which was at the 17-yard line. So they're going to go half the distance to the goal. And that means for the third consecutive time that they've had the football, the Vikings will be looking at first and goal, this time from just inside the Columbus 9-yard line. Let's see if the Vikings can uh, finish off a drive here. It's kind of it's always kind of hard for the teams to come back out after an injury like that. We'll see how both teams respond. And now we've got an issue in the stands. They're needing medical attention in the stands, and I don't know exactly what's going on. Meanwhile, down on the field, the Vikings throw an incomplete pass. We need EMS up in the stands, please. You may have heard over the PA. They're, they're, needing, the they're needing EMS or a doctor up in the stands. What's going on? We need somebody in the stands. Yeah, like you said, there, there was that. I mean, kind of hard to see what we got. Got, got some stuff going on and hope for the best over there in the stands. Yeah, on there's Columbus side the, there too. The whole crowd is standing up, so we have no idea what's going on. We'll fill you in if we get 
any information. Meanwhile, the Vikings throw a pass to Patch Lodeholt, and I think he gets into the end zone for a touchdown. He, that pass was actually was tipped on the line of scrimmage there, and good hand-eye coordination by, by Patch to catch that ball. That ball was tipped, and got, you know, Vikings got in for the touchdown right there. It's a nine-yard touchdown. From Gage Freeze to Patch Lodeholtz, and the Vikings now lead it 28 to 0. Meanwhile, the most of the crowd is looking to the north end of the stadium, trying to find out uh, what's going on and why uh, somebody needs medical attention. Meanwhile, back on the field, the Vikings lead it 28 to nothing, and they're lined up going for two. Daquan Johnson fires to the end zone, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Devonta Yates, but it's knocked away at the last second. 9.24 to play in a very bizarre third quarter so far. It's Parsons 28 and Columbus 0. We will step away for a 30-second break. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. been an interesting third quarter to say the least. We had a, what appeared to be a broken bone by one of the Columbus Titans and right after that apparently an elderly gentleman fainted at the north end of the stadium and he's being attended to right now by paramedics. Vikings kick off leading 28 to 0. It's a short kick fielded at the 25 and a decent return out across the 35 to about the 37 and that's where Columbus will take over first and 10. Good job by the Viking O on that last drive as you get it in. Like I said, it was a batted ball right at the line of scrimmage. Ball was thrown, I mean, relatively hard and batted right there. Hard enough to where Patch caught it, got in there for the six. The Vikings able to finish off a drive after stalling inside the 10 on their last two possessions of the first half. And they enjoy a 28 to nothing lead over the Columbus Titans. Patrick Cassidy back out as quarterback. Running play, finding the right edge. Nice spin move. And it's going to be a decent pickup on first down. Grayson Walden was the ball carrier. And we've got a flag. And I think it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Might be on Daquan Johnson, the way he's reacting. Yeah, you gotta keep your you gotta keep your head in the game there and you gotta make sure and it's you know, like I said, there's a lot of John going back and forth. The game can get chippy at a time like this. you got to keep your head to you. And you don't see Daquan react like that very often. So s something happened <laughs> that really made him snap because he comes off, slams his helmet down on the sideline. And I think we're going to have 15 yards marked off at the end of the play. Right now the ball is spotted at the Columbus 44-yard line. A couple of flags are down. We'll see if it's offsetting again possibly. Yeah, I couldn't tell, but like I said, he was pretty upset out there in that secondary after the play was over there. It's rough, rough out there. So a personal foul on Parsons and a personal foul on Columbus. So they will offset. And the play will stand. It will be second down in about three for Columbus. Second three for the Titans. Very slow moving third quarter. Yeah, we were running at a pretty good pace there in the first half. It seemed like the, both teams were moving down the field up and back, but, you know, like you start getting some penalties in there and, and unforced penalties. I mean, right. you don't really need those out there. Cassidy puts a man in motion. Takes the snap, and it's a running play. Oh, and bouncing off a couple of tacklers. And we've got another flag on the far side. I couldn't really tell, but it looked like Lodeholtz was out there on the edge there and was right there, and like I said, the flag went up. So I don't know if that was a hold on on the Titans or if he, maybe he got his hand around the face mask right there. I'm not sure. Grayson Walden was the ball carrier, and he did a good job bouncing off a couple of would-be tacklers, but he still didn't 
find the edge. Miller didn't gain much yardage, but again, we're trying to sort out the penalty. Face mask on Parsons. Five-yard penalty, it looks like. Yeah, you get going on the sidelines like that, and your hands just kind of slip up. Got to make sure and wrap them up down low. Try to keep, keep your hands out of that face mask area. So that takes the ball up to the Columbus 48-yard line. Well, they will have it first and 10. We have 8.39 to play in the third quarter. Your score, Parsons 28, Columbus 0. Cassidy in the pistol. Throws it out to Schallenberger, and he tries to cut it back inside. Breaks a couple of tackles and has a nice gain down to around the 45. He is a hard kid to bring down. We mentioned earlier how big he is. 6'4", 225. Well, there was three would-be Viking tacklers that had him. I mean, you had him right at the line of scrimmage right there and just didn't wrap up. He's a big kid. You get the head out in front of him, wrap up, let your buddies get there, bring him down. Second down and about four for Columbus as they move into Viking territory. Quarterback keeper right up the middle goes for a very short gain of about half a yard. Good job by the Viking defensive line right there. Just stood him straight up, got a hand on him. And like I said, that's where the linebackers came in, Phil, keep him to a short gain there. A little bit easier to bring down 140 than it is 225. Every day of the week. So Cassidy can be slippery, though. He's, I mentioned earlier, he's a he's a heck of an athlete, great basketball player. Doing a good job running this Columbus offense, although the Viking defense has kept him out of the end zone so far. 28-0. Oh, a bad snap into the backfield, and it is picked up by Columbus and they are looking at a huge loss still on their feet and then they're getting wrapped up way back at the 30 yard line Gabe Martin ran back there and covered it for Columbus but ball be marked about the Columbus 29 and now it's going to be looks like fourth in a country fourth, mile out yeah, there fourth and forever I'll tell you what, it looks like the Vikings might have brought a little bit of pressure right there because I mean, if that center kind of gets that bad snap, he's wondering if he can hear them footsteps creeping up on him right there, right in front of him. So fourth and about 25, and Columbus will be forced to punt. We'll see if any of the Viking return men get a chance to return this. A lot of times these teams will kick off to the side of the field, and they do. It's a very short punt, and picked up by the Vikings. And then his momentum takes Derek Williams out of bounds around the 49-yard line of Columbus. He is one of the best kids of, that I've ever seen do that, to pick that ball up off of, just off the first bounce right there. He just barely stepped out of bounds from that being a huge, huge return. Yeah, I think he was looking at the end zone. So first and 10 for the Vikings. They lead it 28-0, to zero and they have good field position once again on the Columbus 49-yard line. I wonder if the Vikings are going to go back to that run game. It was pretty successful in the first half. They had a couple good gas runs right there uh, to start that first drive in the second half. It's going to be interesting. And then, I mean, you still have the playmakers out in space. I mean, they got a lot of weapons, and using that ground game right now is working. Juan Johnson puts Patch in motion and gives it to Patch on the handoff, and Patch has a short gain down to around the 46-47 yard line. Pickup of about two or three yards. We'll give him three yards on the carry so second down and seven for the Vikings. They handed around got around the outside there couldn't really break it all the way outside to get out by the wide receivers that had blocks out there seen a little bit of an opening cut inside got a three yard gain good job to get what he could out of that play there. Nolan Prale gauge freeze out onto the field patch low holtz heads to the sidelines Five fifty play in the third quarter. Posier split to the near side. It's a running play. Looks like Shibe over the left tackle gets stood up. Pretty good surge there by the Columbus defense, but still. Oh, it was Gage Freeze. Excuse me on the carry. He grinds out a couple of yards for the Vikings. Not too bad of a push, but like I said, the Columbus kind of won that battle right there. Still gained a couple of yards on that play right there. Chewing up some more clock, letting this offense just still be pretty much unpredictable on what they're going to do. So third down and about five yards for the Vikings. Ball spotted at the Columbus 44-yard line. Viking offense up to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Posier split to the near side. Yates to the far side. Vikings moving from our left to our right. 
It's going to be a running play. Shivey to the near side looking for room. Gets down to about the 40 and knocked out of bounds. He's going to be about a yard or two short of the first down. We'll see what Coach Freeze wants to do. The Vikings have not punted tonight. They've either scored touchdowns or gotten stopped inside the 10-yard line. That's pretty much the kind of night it's been. I'd give credit to the Columbus defense right there. They just stretch, I mean, it was a read option play, and you just got to stretch out to the sidelines, and they just kept working them to the sidelines, kept them from getting that first down. So fourth and two, the Vikings will go for it. Gage Freeze takes the snap, gives it to Patch. He's got the first down on a nice cutback. Way to follow your blocker. And Lodholtz inside the 40, down close to the 35. The Vikings move the sticks. That is just will and determination right there by the whole entire offensive unit. You got fourth down and three to, or two to go. Your offense has to be, your line has to be in tune. You got to hit that mesh point right there. Good run by the Vikings. Keep this drive going and keep the momentum on their side. Clock on the move, 4.44 to play in the third quarter. Vikings have it first and 10 from the Columbus 33 three-yard line. Gage Freeze in the shotgun. Read option. Maybe a busted play, but he's at the 35 and ends up getting a decent gain down to about the 32. Yeah, it looked like there was a little confusion in the backfield. Freeze went out for that read option mesh point. Uh, running back wasn't there. Good idea. Keep it. Get what you can. Got some good blocks on the right side there to get himself a five, four or five-yard gain. Good, good effort by Freeze right there on the kind of busted play. You can't help but wonder if the Vikings had uh, run more of these offensive sets against uh, Frontenac, if they might have had a, a different outcome. But, you know, you can just call me a Monday morning quarterback <laughs> <laughs> on that. But uh, that was a tough loss to swallow. It's nice to see the Vikings come back out and play so well here tonight on both sides of the ball. Going to be Gage on a keeper going around the left side. Gets a good block from Patch, but he's still going to be Stood up short of the first down. He boy, he gets swallowed up by about five Titans, and they, I think the ball came loose. And it looked like there's a scrum for it right there, but looked like it. I thought he had his possession. I mean, his line of gain was there. He's kind of stood up, so I don't see how that was. They could actually give that a give that a fumble, but I think they're going to give it. They do give it to Columbus on the fumble recovery. Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Yeah, Freeze went out there and he kind of cut back up. And I thought his momentum was stopped right there. I thought they were going to blow that whistle dead, but they must have made another cut, got loose, and unfortunately threw to the ball. So the Vikings with their first turnover of the night. And Columbus will take over first and 10 on their own 31-yard line. Titan offense up to the line of scrimmage. Parsons in control right now, 28-0. to zero. This is a big, big series for the Vikes. Running play over the near side goes for nice yardage. Running back gets slammed to the turf by Devonta Yates. Looks like there's a little confusion. Parsons had a player running on late on the play there. And I'll tell you what, when you're playing this Columbus team right here, you want all 11 men on the field. <laughs> so it's a gain of about seven yards out to the Columbus, right around the Columbus 39-yard line. Cassidy in the shotgun, takes the snap, keeps it himself on the read option, and he's got the first down. Yeah, there was a lot of Vikings in the backfield there, and look, like they did in the first half, Columbus gets there, and they just kind of turn them out and leave them that big hole to run through right there. So you got to watch out when they're turning. Just got to stay right there on your man and try and force them outside. Let them linebackers flow around and, and get that hit on them. Columbus had a big play on the first play from scrimmage back in the first quarter on a little screen pass with... Wait and see if they bring that back out here in the second half. Running play going to go nowhere this time. Nice defense by the Parsons Vikings. They really got into the backfield in a hurry and blew that play up right from the get-go. Yeah, and on those runs like that, on that read option, like it comes down to the front line right there because that quarterback's not only reading that linebacker, he's reading those defensive end and those defensive tackles on who to go with. If you get in that backfield, you cause some some uh, panic and chaos right there. You get the loss of uh, yards right there. Second down and 10. Vikings showing blitz. Now Derek backs off. Oh, and the quarterback was not ready. Misses the snap. It goes back to about the 25. He's in trouble. And he's going to get swallowed up around the 30. That's the second time this quarter that we've had. Well, that wasn't even a bad snap. Maybe just a missed time snap because the quarterback was looking, I think, off to the sidelines. 
at the coach, and then the ball was snapped. Yeah, you got to wonder if that pressure he still sees that kind of draws your eyes off it just a half a second right there. And, you know, center snaps it back to him. He's not quite ready for it. Big break for the Vikings there but to get that negative play for the Titans. Third and very long for Columbus. Call it third and about 25. Ball spotted just inside the Columbus 30. They're going to have to come up with a big play here on third down. Cassidy again puts a receiver in motion. He wants to throw. Going to go deep down the near sideline and broken up. Oh, Barkin had Barkin. great coverage out there. That ball was thrown high in the air. Barkin just kind of dropped back, sit right there, made a play on the ball just to make sure that the Columbus Titans receiver couldn't catch that. That was a good play by Barkins out there in space. That was Lynn Schallenberger. He was the intended receiver. Six-foot sophomore, 143 pounds. Yeah, great job by the Viking cornerback. So fourth and 25. Columbus brings on their punting unit. So this Viking defense continues to be very, very hard to score on. Good snap. Left footed kicker gets it away to Derek Williams at the 38 looking for a hole is across midfield breaks a tackle and gets to about the 45 yard line so nice job by Derek Williams I'll tell you what there's defenders on him right there looks like he's like almost in a phone booth makes one cut all of a sudden he gets another he gets 20 yards out of that return there good return and good good job by the Viking uh, punt return unit in it and it's all from just you stay with the play the whole entire time because he can break. Yeah, these uh, these speed guys, these skill guys that the, the Vikings have, I, I think they're probably unmatched in Class 3A. I, I, don't, I don't know who else could have a better set of skill guys than what the Vikings have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive to watch these guys out here. I mean, they can go up and get the ball at the highest point, and, I mean, these guys can jump out the gym, and obviously they can jump out here on the football field as well. <laughs> Daquan Johnson back in at quarterback. He'll be in the shotgun. He's got Gage Freeze on his right. Three receivers set for the Vikings. Parsons enjoying a 28 to nothing lead over Columbus late in the third quarter. We've got a flag thrown right at the snap. Gage has a nice gain. Gets pulled down at about the 38 yard line. I wonder if there wasn't some sort of illegal formation because it's like that official had the hand on the flag ready to throw it as soon as the ball was snapped yeah they may not have had enough actually enough guys on the line there but like I couldn't completely tell to see exactly what that flag was but I'll tell you what that was a good play by freeze out there to uh, get it looked like a seven yard gain there but it'd be interesting to see what this call is still waiting for the head referee to give us the signal and it's on Columbus. I think it was an illegal substitution, perhaps. So a bad night just gets worse for Columbus. Again, in case you missed it, we had a pretty ugly injury earlier here in the third quarter. Some sort of uh, obvious broken, broken bone. And uh, the injured player was a senior. Columbus having a rough go of it, losing 28 to nothing so far. And now a penalty gives the Vikings another first down. Ball spotted at the Columbus 33-yard line. Viking offense quickly up to the line in scrimmage. Anthony Powser is split wide to the right for Parsons. Gage Freeze back in at quarterback. He wants to throw. He's going to go deep down the far sideline. Oh, what a great catch by Yates, and he will walk into the end zone for the touchdown. He came back. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and Yates made a great adjustment. And it is a 33-yard touchdown pass from Gage Freeze to Devonta Yates, and Parsons now leads it 34-0. to zero. Yeah, what a play by Yates coming back there. Ball was underthrown. Yates got turned back, look at the right, right time, went back, made a catch. He looked like he just kind of stood there, let the guy go right, beside, right in front of him, walked in for six. So if Parsons is able, they're going to go for two. If they convert this, we will probably be looking at a running clock for the entire fourth quarter. But first things first, the Vikings will have to convert. Again, that swinging gate formation. Hadn't seen that all year until tonight. Johnson has it, looking, looking. 
throws to the end zone. I don't know why he didn't run it. I think he could have ran it in. Yeah, it looked like he had enough space out there, enough yards yeah. to maybe if he throws a little little pump fake right there, might be able to walk right in there for that two point. So pass is broken up. The score remains. Parsons 34 and Columbus 0. We'll be back after this 30-second break. You're listening to Viking Football on B93. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. Welcome back to Marvel Park, everybody. Another district action. Just received an update. Caney has come back to take a 21-14 lead over Frontenac, so they've got quite a battle going on. Not so much here at Marvel Park. Short kickoff fielded at the 20-yard line. And a pretty decent return. Oh, then a hard hit around the 34. Yeah, I, so think that's that, I think that was will a take kicker. Over. I think that was a kicker that came with that big hit. Just last, usually kind of the trailer guy comes right there. Kid from Columbus cut back in. Kicker said that's uh, as far as you're going to go on that one. That was a heck of a hit. And Columbus takes over first and 10 from their own 34. Let's and they trail it 34 to 0. Let's see if that Viking defense continues to put some pressure right up the middle. They're, they're, like I said, they're letting some chunk plays, but they've been showing some pressure. Columbus with their first down play, running play up the middle, and then getting into the secondary for first down out near midfield. Nice run right up the middle. Titans continuing to fight hard. I'll tell you what, the Columbus did a good job there. They they got on the ball, and they I mean they just overpowered the Parsons defensive line right there, creating a huge hole, and I mean Columbus took advantage of it. So Columbus has it first and 10 from their own 49. Cassidy hands off a boy and getting swallowed up. The ball is fumbled. And I think they blew the play dead. And Otherwise, that was going to be a fumble recovery for a touchdown for Derek Williams. Uh, it's too bad we don't have replay going on right there because I don't know if he was all the way down or I not. Don't, but I don't looked, think he was. He I, like he had, that ball was loose. Again, if you're able to watch this on the live video stream, you can make your own judgment. That video stream available at klkcradio.com. You can also try finding it on Facebook, the PHS Facebook page, or the KLKC Facebook page. Regardless uh, of what could have happened right there, that was still a great play by the defensive end for the Vikings to stretch them out and hold them up right there for that big play. So that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Vikings will head to the fourth quarter, leading 34 to nothing. I don't think I've mentioned that uh, live video stream being powered this year by Wave Wireless, and uh, we appreciate it, and I know the people that are able to watch appreciate it when they can't make it out to the stadium. Again, 34 nothing. Parsons leads at the end of the third quarter. We'll be back after 30 seconds. This is Viking Football on V93. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. V93.5, we have a full day of entertainment just for you, our favorite listener. Check out Terry Blackburn in the morning. Spend your lunch hour with our Taco Mile 80s and 90s at noon. Matt B. gets you through your workday with the afternoon hit mix. Spend your evening with the Zach Sang Show straight out of Hollywood. And last but not least, it's a throwback party every weekend on V93.5. 4-2-0, Parsons looking to go 5-1 and one on the year and more importantly 2-1. and one in district play with a huge game looming next week down in Caney. Pass over the middle is nearly caught. Pass was just a little bit behind the intended receiver. He still feels like he should have come down with it. Clay Saparito was the intended receiver. 
And that'll bring up third and long for Columbus. Johnson had some really good coverage on him right there too. I don't know if he maybe would have, if he got around there, got a hand in, uh, uh, bat that one down there. But I mean, he was all over that receiver there with great cut, great coverage. Columbus offense looking for some answers. They've been shut out through three quarters here at Marvel Park. Going to be a pass play, and it is going to be caught. Got just over the outstretched fingertips, I believe, of Derek Williams, or possibly Daquan Johnson, and the pass is complete for a first down. That's really the best pass play of the night for the Titans. They will have it first and 10 from the Viking 38-yard line. Yeah, I think Johnson just mistimed his jump just a little bit, maybe jumped just a hair early because, I mean, that ball was kind of hung up there. Good catch, good throw, but he was right there almost had a pick. Cassidy hands it off over the left side for a short gain to Grayson Walden. Good credit by the Viking defensive line right there. They stayed with that play right there. Looked like that was a right defensive end. I couldn't couldn't quite see the number there, but that was a great play for him to come back and make that tackle for a short game. So second down and eight for Columbus from the Viking 36-yard line. Cassidy puts a man in motion. Takes the snap. Running play right up the middle. Vikings ready for that one, but bouncing it outside and getting a nice gain. And a first down. I can't believe the Viking defense didn't wrap him up better than that. That should have been. They should have gone for no gain, actually. And it ends up being a very nice gain down to the Viking 20-yard line. Yeah, even when you do have this big lead like that and everything, you still got to use those fundamentals. You got to wrap up on the on the sidelines right there. Make a play right there. You can't let him get that big gain right there. Wrap up. First and ten from the Viking 20. Cassidy running play right up the middle. That's a nice gain down to around the 10. Probably a gain of nine. I think they're going to mark him down at the 11. And we've got a quick timeout called by Columbus. 11 minutes, three seconds to play in our game. It's Parsons 34, Columbus 0. We'll step away for a 30-second commercial break. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. Clemens Insurance Agency is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clemens Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-9999. So Columbus Titans putting together a good drive here in the fourth quarter. They have it first, make that second one from the Viking 11 yard line, but Parsons in control, 34 to zero. Yeah, you have to have a 35 point lead in the fourth quarter before they will get the running clock going. Pass play, looking toward the end zone. That's gonna be Dropped in the end zone. Almost intercepted by the Vikings and then almost caught for a touchdown by Lynn Schallenberger. Good play by Barkus out there. I mean, he was out there by his lonesome out there. Went out there, got it. Looked like he almost got a hand on it. Could have had the pick there. Regardless of the play, got it interrupted there to where they're holding him from a touchdown right there. Good play by Barkus. Barkus, not a big defensive back either. Only about 5'9", 160. Here's third and short play, getting inside the 10 and still on his feet, getting wrestled down at the six. It's going to be first and goal now for the Titans. It looks like initially they had him right there behind the line, and I don't know, maybe they just can't wrap these Columbus Titans up, but I'll, I'll tell you what, you got to give Columbus, they're keeping their feet moving there. Titans not showing any quit here in the fourth quarter. They want to get on the scoreboard at least. It's been a long night for Columbus. Patrick Cassidy takes the snap, running play. Goes for a short gain of about half a yard. Ball comes loose, but I think they're gonna say again that they had blown it dead. And this time it's probably right earlier when it looked like Derek was gonna run one about 50 yards on a fumble recovery for a touchdown. That one was a little iffy. Yeah, that was a good play by the Vikings right there. 
It looks like um, I couldn't tell. I don't know if that was Shimey that got out there on the tackle there. Got him by the legs where he's kind of hobbling to where he couldn't make any more any more yards on the rest of the Viking defense came in to bring him down. So single setback this time for Columbus, and he goes in motion. Cassidy will throw it out to his running back. He's got a great block, but he gets caught from behind. Great defensive effort. That was a That's great Viking. play by the Viking D right there because if he doesn't catch him right there, that is for sure six. But I'll tell you what, Vikings – not giving up. Ben don't break. Went over there, made a great tackle in the open field. I think it was was that Caven? Was that Noah Caven? I believe made a great tackle from behind. So third and goal from the five. Running play up the middle and getting stood up is Walden. Grayson Walden can't get it into the end zone, and now it's going to be fourth and goal. Whole well, five new guys onto the field for the Vikings for this fourth and goal play. Good job by the Viking front four right there. He, they ran that big back up the middle, and he, they wrapped him up. They were not letting him get anywhere else right there. Good play, way to stay, on, stay on him right there. Just, I mean, you got to hit that kid. Fourth and goal from about the three. Columbus desperately trying to find the end zone. Man in motion. Cassidy takes the snap. He wants to throw, but he's under heavy pressure, and he's going to get sacked. Boy, the Vikings brought a lot of heat. I, did, I didn't expect that, and neither did Columbus. I'll tell you what, what a play right there. They brought some extra heat, like you said, and they wrapped him up right there back in the field. Ben don't break. It's been that way all, pretty much this whole entire year, and that shows it right there. They're deep, deep into their red zone and get a huge sack. Took all that momentum out of Columbus right there. Good job, Viking D. 8.45 to go in our ball game. Vikings will take over first and 10 on their own 11. And they enjoy a 34 to nothing lead. The Vikings are going to move to 5-1. and one. They'll be 2-1 and one in district play. And we'll have a huge game coming up next week against the Caney Valley Bullpups. Juan Johnson in at quarterback. Handoff right up the middle. Goes for a short gain of about two yards. Patch Lodholz was the ball carrier. But anyway, I do like what uh, what I've seen from the Vikings tonight on the run game. You know, last week it was it was tough getting yards last week, and they said, you know what, we're not going to give up on this run. We, th we know we have weapons on the outside. You're still establishing a run against Columbus, and they got some big kids up front. Yeah, and you know, if if Parsons can have a consistent running game, it'd be a very very difficult offense to defend because if you've got to worry about runs off tackle, and then you still got all these speed guys. On the edge, be a defensive coordinator's nightmare. Daquan Johnson takes the snap, gives it to Patch again. Patch has got a decent gain, looking for the edge. He'll get shoved out of bounds short of the first down. Good job by the Viking wide receivers out there. I mean, they're just sticking with their blocks. You never know. It takes They get right by him, boom, and he could go. But, you know, good, good play by the Vikings right there. Good manageable third down. Call it third and about four for the Vikings. Make it five. Third and five. Ball spotted right around the 18-yard line. Clock on the move. 7.28 to play in quarter number four. Parsons has never really been seriously challenged tonight. They led 22 to nothing at halftime. They now lead it 34 to zero. This is a Columbus team that lost 14 seniors off last year's team. Another running play up the middle. Not going to be enough for the first down for the Vikings. And Parsons may have their, what I believe will be their first punt of the night. Yeah, he just couldn't quite get to the hole quick enough there. The Titans did a good job of convulging right there on the tackler. Unfortunately, like you said, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've seen the Viking punt unit on the field. So ball spotted on the Viking 19-yard line. Patch Lodholtz will back up close to his own goal line. Titans bring out their punt return unit. They'll have Jason Herity, freshman, looks like he's a return man. Vikings are going to have to call a timeout. They had a little trouble getting the right personnel on the field, so to avoid the five-yard penalty, they take a timeout. We'll take one of our own. 6.28 to go. In the ball game, Parsons leading at 34-0. This is a 30-second break, and you're listening to Viking Football on V93.
6.28 to go in our ball game. Vikings leading Columbus 34-0. 2018 homecoming for Parsons High School. It's been a good night for the home team and the home crowd. Low snap. Well, Pat Patch is going to run it. Yeah, he's going to get tackled at the 10-yard line after the low snap. I don't know if he could have got that kickoff or not. It almost looked like he had time. And then he thought, now yeah, you know what, I'm going to just take off and try to run with it. And the result is Columbus will have it first and goal from the Viking 10-yard line. Yeah, was a low snap right off of there. Right off the timeout, too, and coming out with a low snap. He took off to his left, and I don't know if he could have tried to kick that left footed or not, but got tripped up. Unfortunate. That five yards really hurts him right there, too. So now Columbus with by far their best scoring opportunity, taking over first and goal from the 10. Cassidy puts a man in motion, fakes a handoff, now throws back. Great coverage by that defense. That Viking defense just swarms all over the field, and it's actually going to be a loss on the play. Columbus tried a little misdirection, and Parsons was not fooled at all. You know what? That takes the with one right there because you're going to see that play on film right there where it's kind of a back slip screen where you roll out, they roll out to the right, and then they turn back around and throw it to the back door. you got to make sure it stay home, stay on your assignment, and that proves right there. You stay at home right there, you get a big play. Second and goal from about the 14 now. Cassidy with an empty backfield, wants to throw. Goes over the middle, has got a man open, and he couldn't bring it in because the pass was thrown a little bit behind him. He was wide open in the end zone, probably should have been a touchdown, but Columbus does not convert. I couldn't tell if that was a little bit of confusion back there because, I mean, he was wide open with, there wasn't a Viking within probably three or four yards of him right there. Looking for the Vikings. There was some pressure on the quarterback there, may have forced him to throw that ball a little bit too hard, a little too high. So third and goal from the 14. Columbus still looking to the sideline. They may have to burn a timeout here because they only have 10 seconds on the play clock. Cassidy looks over the defense. They're going to get the playoff, it looks like. He wants to throw again. This time he has time. Plus nearly intercepted, but it's not. Instead, it's caught, and it is going to be a touchdown for Columbus. Viking defensive back took a chance and got burned. And it is a touchdown for Columbus. Yeah, he could have went for that safe play there, just went and wrapped him up right there. But he went, he kind of went for the pick right there just to keep him from getting in the end of the end zone. And, you know, that gamble didn't pay off for him right there. And Columbus got on the board. 5.40 to go in our ball game as Columbus finds the end zone for the first time tonight. 34-6 to six now your score. that Columbus is going to line up and go for the two-point conversion. And they've got too many guys on the field, too. They've got a guy running off late, possibly two guys running off late. <laughs> they have, they're going to have to take a timeout because they don't have any idea who's supposed to be on the field. <coughs> 5.40 to go. We'll take a 30-second break. You're listening to Viking Football on V93. <laughs> uh, Herman's insurance you couldn't, agency couldn't really is strongly committed to serve the needs of their clients. Their highest priority is to protect your assets and help you manage your total cost of risk by providing innovative solutions. They understand that integrity and respect are critical elements of your business relationship. Insurance is a vital product in today's world. It protects you, your family, and your assets in the unfortunate situations that are a part of life. Give Clements Insurance Agency a call. 620-421-421. 9999. They went for two. Thirty thirty-four to six. Vikings lead it as Columbus comes out for a two-point conversion after scoring their first touchdown of the night. Ryan, real quick, why don't you fill our listeners in on that final that just came in? I'll tell you what, Caney Valley in what looked like it would have been a barn burner come back and beat Frontenac 21-20. So big win for the Bull Pups. Tough loss for Frontenac. Two-point conversion is incomplete. No good. Viking defense holds on that play. 34 to 6. Parsons by 28. So, so with that loss, that'll drop Frontenac to 1 and 2 in district play. And will, Caney will improve to 2 and 1. So Parsons will be tied for second in district play. And uh, so now that game looks even bigger next week because uh, 
you know, play the top two teams in district uh, should get a home game uh, in the first round of the playoffs. But unfortunately for the Vikings, their two toughest opponents are still on the schedule, Caney and Galena. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it just goes to show, I mean, with the district starting a lot earlier, getting those early wins it comes in comes comes in huge. And, you know, you got a game like this that, you know, Columbus is still going to fight all all through this game, and they're not going to give up anything. And you showed by that. I mean, they had multiple opportunities, and they ended up getting in the end zone finally. But, you know, it's going to be a big matchup next week, but you know, we got to finish one off, off one here. Daquan Johnson, Drake Williams will be back deep. I'll definitely look for the onside if they did it right out of the half. You've got to think it's got to be on their mind. And it is an onside. Barkins gets a good job dropping back in coverage right there to get it at the 40-yard line. Nice job by the Viking uh, kickoff team. Tanner Barkus falling on the ball around the Viking 38-yard line. 5.38 to go in our game. Parsons leading it 34-6. to six. And you would, you would probably expect that coming out of Columbus there. You know, they just scored 34-6. to six. It's late in the fourth quarter. You got to try to get the ball back, try to put points on the board. But good job by Barkus, like you said. Get the hands on it. Get down. As far as district standings go after tonight, Galena's going to be on top 3-0. Caney and Parsons be two and one. Columbus and Frontenac will be one and two, and Baxter will be 0 and three. Declan Johnson looking to throw. He's got a man open. It goes right through the arms of Devonte Yates. You almost look like look how Yates was thinking big time play right there. Just didn't quite get his hands up in time to catch the ball before he makes that one move to take take it right there, catch it first, then make that spectacular move. Well, it looks like the Vikings are gonna they're gonna keep all their starters on the field for a while. I thought they might just go in, come in with three running plays, just keep that clock moving. But uh, Coach Freeze opts for the pass, and it would have worked. It would have been a first down in Columbus territory if Yates had been able to haul that in. Speaking of Yates, he will be split to the near side. Vikings moving from our right to our left. Daquan Johnson back in at quarterback. Couple of running backs. One on his left, one on his right. Maybe a quarterback keeper this time. Look out, he's got a hole up the middle. He's at midfield, then he slips. Otherwise, he may have been gone. That's the second Viking that slipped tonight. Patch Lodholz was the other one when trying to cut back. There was only one guy that had a chance. I'll tell you what, that was a good job by the Viking offensive line right there. They were going down, they were blocking downfield there and allowed Johnson to make one cut, and he cut up middle. Tried to make another cut right there to break it to go to the house, but big, big gain right there by the Vikings. Hozier replacing Derek Williams. Hozier will be split wide right. Also, Nolan Prail, receiver to the far side. Have Yates and Lodholtz to the near side. Quan Johnson in the shotgun. Quick pass to the far side to Posier. Gets around a defender. He's got a first down inside the 35, close to the 30. Vikings move the sticks. Good throw and catch out there. Johnson threw a great pass to Posier. Posier kind of went with a little Ole move to get the first down right there. Great, great awareness where he's at to make sure he get that first down. So first and 10 for the Vikings. Ball spotted at the Columbus 33-yard line. Posier trots off the field for the Vikes. Again, Yates split to the near side. Going to be Derek Williams, receiver to the far side. Daquan Johnson stays in at quarterback. By far the most snaps he's taken this year. Read option, he keeps it himself. He's at the 35-30 and runs out of bounds. Covered pretty well that time by the Columbus defense. Johnson did a pretty good job out there. I mean, he initially had a guy right there, and then he kind of bubbled it out. I mean, he's just waiting for the wide receivers to keep doing work. Like you said, give Columbus credit right there on not letting him throw that ball downfield there, but still stressed out for a pretty good gain on uh, first down there. Ball spotted just inside the Columbus 29-yard line. We'll call it second down and six for the Vikings, who lead Columbus 34-6, 4.36 to play in our game. Daquan. 
Handoff right up the middle to Scheibe. He gets into the secondary. He's got a first down. Nice job by the offensive line and good hard running by Joel Scheibe. I'll tell you what, he hit that hole hard right there. One poor Columbus kid just, he got trucked over right there. Almost giving Scheibe a little bit of boost momentum to get that extra couple yards right there on the end of the run. What a run by Scheibe. So first and 10 for the Vikings. Ball spotted at the Columbus 16 yard line. I'll tell you what, bringing in the element with Johnson there, you've got to respect him coming out off the edge. Johnson at quarterback. I know it's Gage Free sitting on the bench with his helmet off. I, I don't know if he had a, an injury or not. We'll try to get some information and pass that on to you as soon as we can. Pass to Prail goes right through his hands and falls incomplete. And that's unfortunate right there. If he gets his paws on that one right there, he has nothing but daylight from... Uh, where he catched that to the end zone. He had a blocker, two blockers out in front of him and nothing but green grass to run to. Here comes Drake Williams onto the field for the Vikings. Daquan Johnson gets into the huddle. 4.06 to go in our game. Parsons with a 28-point lead over the Titans, 34-6. Vikings still look like they want to score on this drive. They've got... Three receivers to the near side. One receiver split wide right. And Daquan goes to that receiver on the right side. And led Dariq just a little too much. I'll tell you what, that was a great play call right there. Look kind of like the read pass Alton right there. And he was wide open over the middle there too. Yeah, just right a little, little slant. And he was pretty much wide open. But yeah, Daquan just led him by about half a step too much. And... Vikings now looking at a third and long from the 16-yard line. See what Coach Kurt Freeze. I'll tell you what, Johnson can throw the ball. He's put. He's got a lot of zip on his passes when he's uh, throwing that ball. Yeah, he, everybody knows about his speed and athleticism, but he he has an arm on him as well, and he wants to throw on third down. Lofts it up for Yates, and he's going to be out of the end zone. An amazing catch, but he was out of bounds. I'll tell you what, if he had another half a yard right there, Yates would have had a Sports Center top 10 catch <laughs> up there one handed, but just ran out of real estate. So now the Vikings facing fourth and 10 from the Columbus 16. We'll see if the Vikings can get it into the end zone or pick up 10 yards here for another first down. Again, 34 to 6. Parsons in control, just 358 to go in our ball game. Prail, Lode Holtz. And I believe Posier split to the right side. Pass play. Johnson looking, 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 trying to direct traffic. Throws it to the end zone, and it's broken up, incomplete. Tip your hat to the Columbus defense. They uh, did a good job on that fourth down play, and they give the ball back over to their offense. First and 10 from their own 16, 349 to go in the game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Johnson kind of, he's scrambling up to the right, and you got to give credit to Columbus D. Though. They stayed with their with their guys out there and not letting him zip a ball in there. They tried to force one through in a tight window, but, you know, Columbus had good coverage and went down incomplete. Columbus offense back out onto the field for what may be their last drive of the game. It's like they may, trying to see if they have a change at quarterback. They may have put the freshman in. It's a running play to the near side. Goes for maybe a yard. Now it looks like Cassidy is still in at quarterback for the Titans. Looks like that was Heisey out there on the defensive end spot. He made a great play out there. Kept his edge like you're supposed to do with a defensive end. You keep that edge. Make him either kick it out to the outside or go back inside. He got his bear paw on him right there. Good job by Heidi out there on defensive end. So second down and 10. Running play over the left side. Goes for a very short gain, maybe no gain at all. Again, defensive front for the Vikings. You get, you're standing them up right there and kind of exploding that play in the backfield to where they're not able to get, get out there. Good job by the Vikings holding their line right there. So third down. And 10 for Columbus. And again, it's Parsons leading this contest 34 to 6. 
2.45 to go in our game. Less than 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Now Cassidy up to the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap. Running play. Again over left tackle. Goes for a short gain. Well, I tell you what. You know, I mean, Parsons is getting some, you can really tell the determination and in, in hard work and practice in summer is really playing off because it's late in the fourth quarter and the Titans are still running the football and they're still coming out and hitting them hard. Vikings are matching them right here when it counts right here late in the game. So now it looks like Columbus will bring on their punting unit. Fourth and about six. Punter standing on his nine-yard line. Daquan Johnson, one of the return men out there for the Vikings. The kick away from Daquan. That means it goes into the hands of Derek at the 45-yard line. Looking for a block. He's coming to the near side. He's at the 50. Great what stiff, a arm. stiff arm. And then he's going to get swallowed up. That was a tremendous stiff arm. And the Vikings will take over first and 10 from their own 47-yard line. I just received one final update from the tennis regional. Head coach uh, Kurt Fries will be very proud. His uh, daughter, Grayson, was the runner-up. She took second place. It was a four-hour three-set match. And if you know anything about tennis, that's a, that's a long time to be on a tennis court. She lost in the third set 6-4. So a great effort by Grayson. And she will be the regional runner-up and will advance to the state tournament. So, you know, Kurt Fries will be very proud of his daughter's performance and be very proud of uh, his son, Gage Fries, has done a nice job tonight along with the rest of the Vikings. They have really, uh, I won't say they've put on a clinic, but they have played very well tonight and they've outclassed this Titan team, 34-6. New quarterback in for the Vikings, Ethan Houck. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it looks like he got a little bit of rotation of some different players coming in for the Vikes here. You know what, credit goes out, or credit's due, the offensive defensive line he played a great game. Playmakers all making plays and everything like that. Great, great comeback for the Vikings after that, you know I mean, heartbreaking loss last Friday. Yeah, that was really good to see. I don't think anybody knew how the Vikings would respond after that tough loss. And they... Uh, They've responded very well. Ethan Houck running down the play clock. He's in the shotgun. Just one minute to play. Vikings are going to win it. They lead Columbus 34-6. There's the snap. Houck going around the right side. He's got a nice hole, and he's going to get inside the 40-yard line of Columbus. And we're probably only going to have time for one more play by the time they get the ball set. Great read by Houck right there. Rolled out to the right, looking and looking, looking. Decided to just tuck that thing, and he got a great gain right there. Showed some, showed some good speed yeah, he's through a, there. He's a great athlete. And uh, Vikings are going to line up for one more play, it looks like. Again, Ethan will be in the shotgun. Looking at the play clock, doesn't really matter at this point because we have less than 20 seconds to go in the game. So this will be the final play. It's a running play right up the middle. Goes for a short gain. And they stopped the clock temporarily because it was a first down, but then they're going to get that reset. Teams are already lining up to congratulate each other. So yeah. Now they wind the clock. 34-6 to six is going to be your final score. The Vikings are going to go to 5-1 and one on the year and 2-1 and one in district play. Columbus drops to 1-5 and five on the year and 1-2. and two in SEK. Once again, your or in district play, excuse me. Again, your final score, Parsons 34 and Columbus 6. We'll step away for a two-minute break, and we'll be back with our Bowen Pharmacy postgame show. You're listening to Viking Football on B93.
We gotta like to see that right there for that. And time now for the Bowen Pharmacy postgame show. The Vikings knock off Columbus on homecoming night, 34-6. Had a nice uh, moment out on the field just seconds ago. Both teams huddling up together. It looked like for a, a short time of a prayer. I think a lot of that has, probably has to do with the uh, Columbus Titan that was injured back in the third quarter. Uh, but uh, great night for the Vikings. They went at 34-6, 5 and one on the year and it's been a long time since you've had five wins for a Viking uh, football team and they did it very convincingly Ryan 34 to 6 again that, that defense we've talked about it for several weeks now uh, they'll give up a couple of big plays here and there but they are really hard to score on I'll tell you what and I mean that's just discipline uh, what comes down to is discipline and determination we're not I mean that's there's end zone we don't want anybody getting in there and you know it's that bend don't break and you know you had I had a great great job I mean had, had an interception tonight and almost had a couple of them too and looked like what could have been a uh, fumble recovery for a uh, score as well but I mean impressive by the Viking defense all around and I mean and the offense showed their will as well yeah we'll break down the uh, scoring plays for you real quick um, for the Vikings they had a 30 yard pass from Gage freeze to Derek Williams back in the first quarter Late in the first quarter, a three-yard run by Patch Lodholtz to go up 14-0. to zero, And the Vikings really focused on trying to run the ball and sustain some drives. And they did that for the most part tonight. There were a couple of drives they weren't able to finish off uh, once they got inside the 10. But all in all, it was a big improvement. Early in the second quarter, there was a 50-yard pass from Freeze to Daquan Johnson to go up 22-0. Uh, that was our halftime score. And then in the third quarter, we had a nine-yard pass from Gage to Patch Lodholtz. And the Viking final score was a 33-yard pass from Gage Freeze to Devontae Yates. And then late <coughs> in the fourth quarter, I had a 14-yard pass for Columbus for their only score of the night. Parsons 34-6. to And, Ryan, I don't know what to expect next week other than I think it's going to be a great game. You look, Frontenac beat Parsons 7-6. to Caney turns around tonight, beats Frontenac 21-20. to uh, I don't think there's much separation between the Vikings and the Bullpups. I'll tell you what, it's going to be amazing to amazing to watch that game next weekend. It's, I mean, you can tell the way this Parsons 